So Three Body Problems got one of the most horrifying scenes I think I've ever seen in a TV show. If you've seen the series then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and this is something I think will stick with me forever. Now I've only ever done one of the scene breakdown like this where I've talked about how a scene was absolutely devastating. That just happened to be the Red Wedding, which yeah, D&D, don't mind killing off several characters at once I guess. I blame them for ruining Game of Thrones, but after watching Three Body Problem, they pulled me right back in. It's one of the most impactful things I've ever seen, and in this video, we're gonna be breaking it down. This includes the subliminal images that appear within it, the deeper meaning, and also how it may be more real than you think. So come with me, bugs, because it's time to face Judgment Day, and we as a people need to pull ourselves together. Hey, pull yourself together, mate, and hit the thumbs up, and also please subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into Three Body Problem. Why isn't it working? It is. Now just to set up the scene, we have Augie being asked if her nanofiber tech can be used as a way to wipe out Judgment Day. This will let Thomas Wade get his hands on a special hard drive that could be the key to defeating the Santi. Activating her nanofibers, we watch as the entire ship's habitants get draxed in Infinity War. You're never going to look at your potato slicer in the same way again, and it's something that's going to stick with you forever. Obviously, they took some inspiration from Ghost Ship, but they delay the fear here by having it work slowly. To me, this subliminally builds off the back of a theme within the show, which is a slow feeling of dread that builds up throughout. Just like this guy, we're initially confused and kind of don't know exactly what's going on in the series. Slowly though, we start putting it together and it finally dawns on us how terrible that it is. This in a way is just like the Santi, who we know are out there approaching very slowly. They're invisible and silently moving towards us, but like the passengers of the Judgment Day, we're completely unaware. However, it's once we know that the horror starts to dawn on us, which I think is summed up perfectly in the actors. However, once they become aware, the others start to panic, but there's no way to stop it, which makes it an unforgettable scene. Even just to build up to it, you kind of see everyone going through their normal lives, completely unaware of what's about to come. This is how most of the people on Earth could be until we learn of the Santi's arrival. Now in this build up, we see a lot of kids, but there's never any that gets sliced up in the scene. First of all, thank you for not killing any children on screen during the Panama uh, <laughs> chaos. We did so many off screen. What? I think it's something where your imagination does most of the work, and like the shower scene from Psycho, you start to fill in the blanks. They have a moment that subliminally enforces this when we see the woman pop out the door of the classroom. On the wall we can see the little kid cutouts getting cut in half, which is of course now happening across the ship. It's such a good way to highlight what's going on without actually needing to show the over the top gore. It also enforces the idea of claustrophobia and makes you panic as you see people struggling to get out. There's a true feeling of hopelessness that's amplified by those realising they can't escape their fate. It shows how fear and the limits of human understanding can cause one to panic and also feel dread. No one really knows what's going on, but they just know that something bad is happening. Corridor scenes just have something about them as well, and the other one that springs to mind is the one from Resident Evil. That too completely rocked me as a kid, but I found this even worse because you can't see the nanofibers. When talking to TV Line, D&D brought up how they subtly had Augie's cube fall apart, which seemed like a nothing burger earlier on. However, this basically explained to us how the tech was going to work, and this is what made us realise what was happening. She should out to TV Line for their interview, in which they asked about how it went down. DB, did you always have the scene toward the beginning of the show where we, I mean, we essentially see this happen in miniature, right, in Augie's lab, like she taps the cube and it falls into slices. Was that part of it, or did you feel like you had to add that after to make it super clear what was happening in the ship? No, we, we always thought it was one of the, the ship sequence uh, we knew was kind of going to be the big centerpiece that that we've been discussing. But for it to be effective, you can't have anybody explaining what's going on while it's going on because that completely destroys it. So for it to be effective, you need to put all of the ideas on the table before that and introduce them to people so they're familiar with them. But you can't let them know when that's happening. You can't let them know that this is... I know this is really dull, but like pay attention to it because it's going to become important later. It needs to pull its own weight in that moment. And that speaks to how technology is often turned into weapons, which is something that we know from our own history. Oppenheim has been a big talking point recently, and his work on the Manhattan Project has been widely discussed. He was a school professor who, due to his knowledge of physics, ended up giving us our most powerful weapon. 
I'm sure when scientists started splitting the atom that they didn't do because they wanted to build an explosive. However, that's inevitably where their minds start to go, and it shows how technology can often be twisted. That's something I think we see in Oggy, who's made something that can now be weaponized. Like Oppenheimer, you see the regret as she watches what she's unleashed, and just like Oppenheimer, she gets a... Congratulations, Dr. Salazar. I think that's what actually stood out for me the most when I went back and watched this scene for the video, just that congratulations at the end. I think this really asks the question of what technology can cost, which again ties back to that atomic bomb discovery. The military knew that it would be killing children and innocents who just so happened to be in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Oggy also knows there's children on board who have nothing to do with it, but it's going to hopefully be working for the greater good. It could save countless lives, but it of course comes with a terrible cost. Technology being used to wipe things out to the point of extinction is something that's been apparent in life since the dawn of creation. Homo sapiens wiped out the Neanderthals and now the Santi are coming to wipe out us. It's likely that this is a part of life and something that we all must wrestle with. This is something that the second book Dark Forest discusses and it goes further into the Fermi paradox. It states that everything we know about the universe means it should be teeming with life and yet all of the stars and planets are silent. The Dark Forest paints out a thought experiment where it describes what it might be like for life moving through the cosmos. It describes the universe as the Dark Forest and those moving through it are hunters. If you become aware of another hunter out there, then you have a choice. You can try and communicate with them or take them out in case they're hostile. It's possible that they may become aware of you soon and thus you have to make a choice before they do. They could potentially see you and worry that you could be hostile too and even if you potentially both just wanted to communicate, you may be harboring something darker and thus they may not want to take that chance. That's why the Santi turn on us when they learn that we can lie because it makes them realise that we just can't be trusted. Now the Dark Forest thinks that potentially all civilizations in the stars are scared of the others because in revealing themselves they might get the attention of another who wants to wipe them out. Resources are finite and thus there will be other civilizations out there who want to take their planet for their own. Thus it's better to just keep quiet and hide in the dark which is what the Fermi Paradox states. Now the most messed up thing is that these nanofibers have basis in reality and Claire McNair at The Ringer did a brilliant article breaking down the tech. She brought up how in the book the fiber webs are known as the zither which is named after the musical instrument with parallel strings. Described as being 100th the thickness of human hair, they were affixed every 50 centimeters from the waterline to the top of the ship. Claire brought up how the zither actually exists in real life with electro spinning being the method that's used to create them. This makes fibers with a diameter of less than 1 micrometer that can be used for a number of applications. Now luckily mate, the nanofibers can't be weaponized just yet, with Claire quoting Michael Barsome, who's a professor in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at Drexel University. He stated that when applied like this, the material wires are no stronger than silk, but still, maybe one day, they'll be able to make a breakthrough. Being able to make them in the first place may have seemed impossible 100 years ago, and as we know, today's science fiction is tomorrow's science fact. I also love how Mike Evans dies asking for forgiveness, and it is possible he thinks his masters might have turned on him. They would possess power like this, and he may even wonder if it was them in his final few moments. The fact is, he just doesn't know and neither do the passengers and we watch as the ship starts to fall apart as it reaches the shore. Paints had a horrifying scene that works on a number of levels because there's so many different things going on in this moment. I hope this video has helped you appreciate all the levels that it's working at and why it's even more terrifying than you initially might have thought. It perfectly sums up several things about the show and no doubt the Santi will be watching us getting wiped out as well like the humans do in this moment. It's one of the series biggest talking points and hopefully you've talked about us going back through it and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well and, and did it, has, do you still remember it because I, I sure as hell do. Please drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and if you also want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society then please click the join button. We get early access to videos every week and it goes a massive way to helping breakdowns like this get made. Gonna get some heavy spoilers and merch as well, we've also got our t-shirt line located below the video that will let you pick up all kinds of tops like our few time ones. House of Dragons stuff, Marvel teaser and more. We drop new designs on there all the time too, so definitely keep an eye out and thanks for your support. Now if you want something else to watch, we've got two videos on screen right now that I'll let you choose which one you want to see. First video, MT breaks down 3 body problem and goes through everything that happened in the series and what the end could signify. The next one is that Red Wedding breakdown which yeah, I'm quite proud of, so uh, if, if you're interested in that then go check it out. Yeah, with that out of the way, thanks for sitting through the video. I've been your host, Paul. You've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.